And here we go again for another episode. My God, I have just been on an emotional roller coaster. Another one. Yeah, with that episode was just wow. Wow. Today, My goodness. Yes. And today we had Connor from the Man Made Beard Company on and his story. Ah, oh, wow. This. There's times you'll probably, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the reaction on mine and Marty's face. It's like, wow, the sadness is just, oh, mate, it's draining, isn't it? I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, I'll be thinking about that all day. But what a story, mate. So inspiring. What a turnaround. And before we get into it, my mate beard company does sponsor us there, Alpine My Beard Growth. They're definitely going to be helping you soon with your beard, bro, aren't they? Put your orders in. Yes, orders in. Description below. Potty 10 on checkout will get you 10% off. It don't matter if your beard is like mine. No. It's like different sizes. Products are there for you. Take care of yourself. Take care of your beards, my friends. Hmm? Yes, and also another one. If you are struggling mentally, if you're a man, head over to this link in the description to the Men Unite group. It is private. It's closed. It's a safe environment for you to open up. And also, if you're a lady and you're struggling, we have Women's Unite. Exactly the same. The link will be below. Head over there. It's safe. It's closed. It's private. All for you to open up about mental health. Express yourself. See different stories, how they relate to your story. And enjoy it. Enjoy that. And also enjoy this episode, you beautiful humans. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Spread the word. (laughs) Spread the word. Enjoy. In. Really. Have fun. So today we've got Man Made Beard Company on the show. Connor, how are you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing well. How are you? Yes, mate, I'm good. I say I've I've been using your products, which I love. Monty, I think I described it last episode as having sex in my beard. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine, man. Oh, yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that sorted. We've got mine, the high on. Mine. Hey, mine's feeling rusty. Oh, you don't want we that. need some oil on that. Look, look, look. I'm about to cut my hands, mate. <laughs> Sharp. Sharp. So, Connor, mate, about you. Where where's it all began with your journey before the the beard company? Before the beard company. Um, right. Go back uh, several years. Um obviously I got into a job, I worked my way up into management. Yeah. Um, and it sort of went corporate, if I'm honest. Um, there, was, there was massive on culture. I love the whole culture. That sort of, if you look at what I'm doing with my brand, that's sort of something I'm trying to do. Um, and as I sort of got further up the ladder into management, the stress just started piling up, um, if I'm honest. Like, um, I wanted to manage how I wanted to manage, and they wanted to manage how they wanted to manage, and it sort of just didn't work out. Um, and the stress sort of hit home, really. Um, I got moved units, so... I was managing a warehouse down in Bridgewater, uh, which is about just over an hour or so drive from me. So yeah. Doing night shifts as well, may I say. Um, end up becoming like a 14-hour day each day. Um, wow. You mean driving at like 8 o'clock in the morning, being stuck in traffic, you're not happy with that. So, What what was it doing? What was the job? Like- so it was, uh, it was like a wholesaler, basically, for like retail customers. So yeah. obviously like fancy restaurants and stuff. We're supplying the fruit, the veg, like the dairy, like literally the full works. Oh, so that's um, the early starts and the early starts then? Yeah, it was a 24-hour operation other than the Sundays, um, where obviously it broke off from the Saturday. But like obviously the company was great, but obviously with my direction of where I want to go, it just wasn't suited to the company, unfortunately. So we just departed ways, and here I am making my own culture. <laughs> my guy, nice mate. Say with the with the early starts and the long shifts, did that affect you mentally? 
Did it, think, do it, were you drained? Like, I think you're always drained. And yeah. if you've ever worked a night shift, um, like for instance, that first night back's hard, but like come the end of the week, you're drained. And if you're not sleeping, anyone knows if you're not sleeping, you're going to be rassed. You mean you're not going to be your happy self? You're going to be irritable. Like, yeah, you mean TV too loud? You're going to be screaming, wanting to pull it off the wall. Like, you mean? Um, and I think that's what it really got down to. Like after years of doing it and not sort of doing how I wanted, I wanted to do. I, w- I wanted to look after people. That's management to me. Like I wanted to yeah. bring the best out of people. Um, and it just, it was, wasn't about that in the end. And I thought, sod it, I'm going to help people. Um, not Nicely enough, they actually put me through my mental health first aid, of course. Oh, that's cool. Um, so thank you to them for that. And then when I opened up my beard brand, I thought, right, it's not about me, it's about them. So people over profit, and that's what it's about. Um, and as you know, I do sp- spread a lot of awareness on mental health, um, a lot of videos as well. Well, not a lot of videos, but there will be a lot of videos. Um, and just try and build people's confidence, even if it is a little comment on a photo, you know what I mean? Um, so we obviously a chat we do. Um, I do get quite a few chats and I do get a lot of compliments on people feeling better after a chat. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> Yeah, say with with talking, people say I, I do it like I know Monty, you help people as well. Uh, it it really helps you. Like if if someone comes to me, I I, I get quite a lot of messages like on Instagram. Uh, people just needing a bit of you know someone to talk to, so a bit of advice or a bit of support. Uh, I think mainly it's they want to like get that realization that they're actually they're not the only ones that. I've been I've going through it or I've been through stuff. And so after I like, talk with someone, you're like, oh, I feel like loads better. Like just, just cause I can relate to what you've said. So exactly. Do you, do you find that when you're, when you're talking to people? I, I do. I, I think of like, sometimes when you have a conversation, uh, you know, when you've had like a proper shit day at work and like, you just need to rant, you need to rave. Yeah. Like, I, I always say to people like my inbox is there at your disposal. Like, no judgment. And obviously, everything that goes in my inbox is private and confidential, by the way. Um, so you can message me saying, you fucker, this and that, and just get yeah. it off your chest. And then 10 minutes later, we're, we're chatting. Like, you mean, um, my mother's a good advocate for this because she comes and moves about her shift all the time. Ugh. And, um, yeah, I, th- I think you just need someone to listen. Um, obviously, I do have the qualification, but... I'm not a man that has loads of qualifications. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I don't same. care about qualifications. We talk about experience. Um, and you don't need to be qualified or experienced to lend an ear. You just be saying, mate, how are you? Um, yeah. And that one sentence, like I said, if you've seen the video last week, can make the difference of someone's day, man. Yeah, big time. Big time. With the, obviously this qualifications that you just mentioned, I see it quite a lot. Like, oh, uh, I'm, we're qualified in this, that, and all this. We've got degrees in this and that. But the main question is, like, do they? Do these people have the life experiences? I'm not saying that they don't, but what I'm saying is a lot of people relate to life experiences of their own. Yeah, yeah. I, I see it quite a lot. Like, don't get me wrong, I respect everyone that's got the qualifications, that's obviously higher up in degrees and PhDs and however far it can go but life experiences you do not get a qualification for life experiences you have the best degree you can have you know it is mate <laughs> that's just that's the best degree you can have it is I reckon I reckon we'd all in, we'd all get an A star there you go <laughs> I'll just give you an A star Monty mate thank you that's the first A star I've had in my life Really? Yeah. <laughs> one? Fair, I, got, I got one in Spanish. Oh well that that's yeah. You yeah, you're Colombian still, and still, you're... still counts, mate. Still counts. I've got an A star in Spanish. And an A star in the streets, mate. Experience. In the streets. Experience. That's where all my boy. experience. Yeah, boy. The boy in the streets got the A star. A star. A star. In the, in the Colombian streets. Come on. <laughs> now you know you know what you said, Connor. Uh, yeah. It's very 
it's very important as well when when he when he goes to letting someone open up to you, letting them know that you're not offering your help, but also like you're not gonna judge them. And that's what we're we're afraid of. Well, not not me anymore, but I used to be afraid of speaking to someone because of the judgment that was gonna come with it. Exactly, yeah. And it's about being free, being confident, but confidence got to be given from the individual that's going to be listening to them as well sometimes because a lot of the times it's about who you're going to speak to, yeah. how they're going to take it. But majority of the times, it comes down to the individual itself, like myself. If I've got a problem, if I'm experiencing something, the first thing I do is accept it, acknowledge it, and don't judge myself because of what I'm going through. Yeah and feel free and then boom, I can think clear. But what you do is amazing, especially just opening your inbox to a lot of people. We do that as well with obviously with Men Unite, I'll be on it own myself, and we don't judge people. And that's, that's what it's got, to, the things that has got to change in life is that just everyone deserves respect. Everyone has their own issues. Yeah. And big up yourself, homie. <laughs> so man. So what, what experiences with mental health have you had in your past, bro? Um, so obviously going back to the job, etc. Um, yeah. That was obviously very stressful. And obviously I will explain in further detail the videos to come. Um, but back in 2019, um, obviously, you know, from our previous conversations, I'm a big fan of dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, outside of my back garden, we've got sort of like, um, like a canopy. Okay. Um, and you know, like obviously a skipping rope, etc. Yeah. Um, I was drained, tired, you know, them days where you just like, I can't fucking get out of bed. Like I, I drain, I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to yeah. sit in a dark room and I was just crying, man. I'm not even going to lie. Like I cried, like, fuck it. We cry. Man, yeah, we, we cry. cry we cry but and that 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 was it man i just went outside hung a rope up like um obviously i had a little deck chairs i stood on the deck chair put my neck through it i tightened it up had my left foot off with my right foot still on the chair and my dog at the time stella who's obviously passed away i uh, walked out and just looked at me with a weird fucking face like on her yeah like what you doing uh, yeah yeah and like Obviously, I'm a massive dog person, so, and as, well, if you've got dogs and you're a big dog person, you'll understand the sort of looks that they do sometimes give you, like, you sort of talk in your head, like, what they might be thinking. Yeah. Um, and it sort of just made me put my foot back on the chair. Um, I know, obviously, a lot of people that do will watch this um, probably haven't heard that story yet, because I've not actually broken out, so this is the first. Um, but, yeah, I'm fucking quite nervous talking about it, to be honest, but... That was one of the parts. Um, the biggest part for me was obviously at our football club, Hanum Athletic, our local one. Um, there's a nice group of lads. Obviously, we would go up there for the Saturday drinks after work or whatever, watch football or play the football. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to say his name because I'm confirmed with the parents and stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he took his own life. And I wasn't best friends with him, but I was like, he was the guy that was there, he'll have a beer with him. And man, like, that, oh, the upset, that funeral, like, that's what was my turning point. I was probably, the, not the most upset, but I was fucking blowing my eyes out, man. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. People was like, why is Connor crying? Like, why is he so upset? Like, he wasn't best mates. But like, it was flashbacks to that day with my dog and outside. And... I think that was like, right, I've been so fucking low, but I don't want to upset all these people around me. And if you've pictured it from that point of view, yeah, however bad you get, I, I think I, I picture that sort of atmosphere. Um, and me, like, that was the turning point. I thought, fuck, I've got to do something. Like, so, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, people like don't understand like the hurt that families go through yeah uh, you know people people die you know it's that's life you know people die through illness or old age or whatever but when when a family member or someone close to the family um kills themselves 
it's a complete different feel of emotion yeah. because they'd be going through, well, what could I have done better there? Could I have said something that day? Yeah. yeah I wasn't there for him. And that'll be playing on their mind every day. Yeah. So for, so for you going to that funeral, I bet you also felt the family's feelings as well. Because it would have been just one big, like, complete sadness. Yeah. It, as far as funerals go, to be honest, like, his, his parents give him a, a fabulous send off. Um, yeah. Hundreds of people because he was a lovable lad, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and like I said, I wasn't closest with him, but he was always someone that you're like, cheers at the bar and like, sound mate, like, how are you doing on a point? Like, but like, if you've, been it, especially in that particular year, it was just shit for me. I was like, right, that's it. I'm, I've made my mind up. I, I want to leave. Like, if you, like I want to get away from the stress. I want to do something that makes me happy that I can do to help other people. Yeah, and that, that was it. So I started planning my business, etc. But obviously, going back to obviously the funeral and stuff, it does open you up to think: if I did that, what will happen? What's the aftermath? Yeah, you know what I mean, and that that's what stopped me. Um, like. Not every time, but like just them flashbacks um, to why, even though when I've been so low that I'm not going to go that far, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and now, like, I talk about self awareness. Um, like, it's okay not to be okay. And if you're not feeling okay, you can have a chat or you can deal with it however you deal with it, but just make sure you deal with it. You know yeah, I, mean? I think that's the yeah. hardest part for a lot of people, though, isn't it? Just that first step is always like, it feels like it's a million miles away from you. Yeah. I, I've, I've been there myself, and I know, Monty, you have as well, bro. It's yeah. it's the most... It's it's really hard to describe that feeling of, I, I can't get to that first step. I don't know how to get to that first step. Or sometimes I'd be like, oh, I, can, I could do that. But when the time has come to doing it, it's like therapy, for example. Yeah. There was a few times where I booked in for therapy after work. I'd leave work, I'd be driving to therapy, and I'd literally drive, I'd just fucking drive past it, mate. <laughs> yeah, it does. Honestly, like just, drive, just drive past it and go home. And then, like, family, like, oh, how's, how's therapy gone? Uh, yeah, it's all right, yeah. But then the next week, I'd be like, right, I'm doing it now, I'm doing it now. I'd do exactly the same, I'd just drive straight past the fucking office mm. until it comes to the time where I actually broke and I thought, right, I've, I've got to do this now. I've got to do this or I won't be here. Simple yeah. as that. And I did it. And it takes a lot of courage to take that first step. Yeah. You, even just messaging someone on on social media or emailing someone, that that is a massive step for anyone to take. And I always say, like people that message me you know that the first step's done you don't need to worry about that first step no more you've opened up to a complete stranger you don't even know yeah you can it's mate honestly that just describing that feeling that first step is just so odd like yeah. if it come up in a question i won't be able to answer it to be blank yeah be blank me because I don't want to write. Yeah. I mean, I'm shit with exams anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but if a question come up like that, bah, 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 I, no, it'd be blank. Yeah, it's it's mad, obviously. A lot of people do it differently. Yeah. In my, yeah. in my case, it was the talking. But then I only spoke because I was found before I, I was going to do what I was going to do. And that was by my missus and my mom. And that's when I broke down and I spoke. But then my, that was my first step. And the second step for me, I never sort of um, seek that therapy or anyone like that because of what I was going through. Everyone's story is different. So I, I was going through a hard time in my life where I thought everyone was against me, literally everyone. So what I had to do with myself was sort of take a step back, simplify so sort of like the life I was having, because so, I thought I was living too fast. And I had to look around the people that were around me when I got caught up in that moment. 
and then sort of like get rid of all of that. And then I became like a, a lone soldier and I had to take control of my own life. Obviously, it's a different way to what a lot of people have overcome their own obstacles because I, I had no options in regards of I might speak to, say like, not, not even once it crossed my mind that I, I could speak to the FA or the PFA, for example. Not once. Because I just thought everyone was against me. Yeah. yeah. And I had to fuck off back to Colombia, basically. Really? And start all over again. The when big reset. I had to go on a massive reset. And obviously after that, that's when I joined Bristol Rovers. All but right. I had to... <laughs> Rovers. <laughs> Up to gas. But yeah. yeah. It's about encouraging one another to speak. Yeah. And if you do need the therapy, if you can't do it on your own, obviously the way I've done it was different to a lot of people. And I'm sure a lot of people that have done the same thing I've done. But just speak to someone, have the courage. And and in your instant as well, Connor, with what you said about the the funeral, even though your friend, your ex-friend wasn't as close to you what a lot of people were saying but you broke down crying due mm. to the experience that you have had within yourself yeah that could have possibly been you and your family around yeah that's sort of how i that, picture those that you know what i mean going for that pain mm. and that this is a message that i hope the listeners the viewers can take from this because you was crying, you were upset, but a lot of people were saying, why is Connor crying? You weren't even that close to him. Instead of coming over and making sure you was okay as well, because in your head, your head must have been going through a lot of things as well. Emotionally, you must have been distraught. Yeah, mate. I obviously, admittedly, quite a few people actually came up to me, checked on me, like, you know I mean, like, especially like a lot of my like close lads um, and obviously his family. I've never really met his parents uh, until that day, if I'm honest. Like, that's how close we were. But like I said, like, you know, obviously being at a football club, you get all the group of lads come together, they have a point. It's just like that. And um, obviously, it, I, I don't know how to put, put it into words, if I'm honest. It's like, you just feel like you're sort of soul sucked out. You just like drop. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, you do feel like kind of empty. And I just couldn't stop that day. I'm not going to lie, like... Obviously, just the, the whole situation of how it happened and just the pain on everyone's face. Like, I hate seeing pain on people's face. And that's why I'm trying to lend an ear. Um, and that was shit. <laughs> you can't, I can't put it into words other than how shit it was. Um, Through pain, how, grow. Yeah. Yes, mate. How, how, how do you deal with, say, someone's messaged you and they've like been like, you've hit you with their story of like why they're feeling so low and what they've been through. How do you deal with that? Because there's sometimes I, I can read someone's story and be like, whoa, fuck me. And and that story hits me like heavy. Yeah. Um, well, it kind of depends really. Um, obviously I'm quite a good people person, I believe anyway. So you like judge yeah. a character is sort of something that you can pick up on. Um, and like if people's posts seem to go a bit darker or deeper, you sort of look through the feed and see what. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I'll drop them a message. Um, I actually seen someone last night. Um, I can't remember one hundred percent word for word, but he obviously looked to have a bad time, and I was like, "Look, dude, like, are you okay?" Like, and then he, bro- he well, I didn't break down. He told me what the problem was, and yeah, I was like, "Okay," and then just basically just having a back and forth chat. Um, no, like, sort of, you should do this, you should do that. Just tell me. Just tell me what the problem is. Yeah. And it's literally that. That's what I do. Um, there's a, There was another lad uh, over in America, so, you know, it's nothing to do with my products. It's nothing, like, completely. One day I've just seen, I was scrolling through, and I've seen him crying. I was like, shit, man, i got to do something. Uh, you know what I mean? Dropped a message. Uh, this is obviously when I first, started so i probably had about like 500 followers of that like um and me I, I do keep in contact with him now like just checking up and i checked up on him the other day because he was last time i spoke going back like six months he was talking about like taking his own life and shit um he was going for a breakup blah 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 and mate he's telling me he loves me because i've helped him and that's what yeah. it is it's, it's spreading kindness spreading love like 
I think I think going back to school, obviously I'm 25 at the minute, uh, 26 next month. So I'm getting my grey hairs come through for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think school is kind of where it stems from, if I'm honest. Like you always are fractioned off between the popular, like the, the sort of different genres of people that come together. And I think when you come onto social media, it comes from like the school to like likes and shares and followers. If you look at my video last week, I, I called out social media is fake, man. It's, it's bollocks. <laughs> like, like from a personal point of view, I don't like it. Um, really? I'm, you know what I mean? But from a business point of view, it's great. Um, and I said to some, I put a post up last week saying about obviously taking time out. I take time out. I turn my phone off. And if you've not heard or liked from me for a few hours, you know that's what I'm doing. I'm taking my self-awareness five, well, a couple of hours out for myself. And I, as a business, actually tell people to get off social media. Stop looking at my shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, like, your health is, well, health is wealth, isn't it? You know what I mean? Fuck the money. It's all about your health. Um, that's what I'm trying to improvise with. Yeah, I think if it wasn't for Men Unite and the way that we do behind the scenes, I don't think I'd be on social media. No. No. The only reason I'm on social media is to help spread awareness of mental health. That's, a, that's the only reason. Yeah. That's it. I had a massive clear out the other day on Facebook because there was so much shit on my feed. It was unbelievable. And I think anyone listening or watching this needs to think about how much shit's on my phone when I'm flicking through. It might be Instagram. We got you get you see a lot of shit on Instagram. Mm. Facebook's the Facebook's the fucking worst. I'm yeah, flicking through it. I'm I'm seeing like videos of people being beheaded and mm. like what what the fuck's going on here? Like what why is this being allowed? So like everything like that is gone. I think you have to like sort of like like what you said as well about self awareness. What you like, what motivates you, what do you want in life, where do you want to be in life, and sort of read like direct your thoughts into your platform. So if you've got social media, whether that's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you use, fill your own feeds with what you want to see, with what with with, with what or where you want to be in life, or yeah. what or will drive you to achieve your goal. So like for myself, that's what I do now. I don't just follow someone because of a name or because of the, the famous. I would follow an account who's got 10 followers, but I'm following him because he's got 100 posts about self-awareness, motivational, yeah, inspiring quotes. And all my feeds now, that's all I see. Or I would see things about, obviously, bids, or I would see uh investment things i will see things like that so it's about also understanding what you want in your in your life or if that makes sense do you do you, do you know on your social media do you get like dead random message requests like hey hey baby hey, hey handsome boy with a link in that what have you been up to <laughs> honestly I... <laughs> no <laughs> No, the wife asked me that the other day because I went into me spam. <laughs> Where is this going, eh? He's picking his clothes up off the lawn now, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's let's begin. Right, I went into me spam on Facebook and there's like thirty spam messages. Yeah, and the, the it's full. Yeah. with like women saying come fuck me or hey sexy Ju boy juicy <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like stupid spam but yeah. I've noticed I'm starting gay now on Instagram why too many what only fans <laughs> what, 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 only fans yeah. what, what are you looking on your feed mate Nothing. All, all my feet. All my feet are. It's mental health. <laughs> How come I'm getting right sex things in me spam messages because I'm looking at mental health? 
I think the, it's people taking advantage of mental health. People using mental health for their own yeah. advantage to get their own fans on their only shitting only fans thing that they use just to gain money using mental health. Bits, man. Bits is funny, you know. I, I swear down, I do not look on anything like that on social media. No, I, I get with the spam, obviously. Um, with uh, Instagram, it does fill it out, doesn't it? So you can just clear it all at once. But yeah, I think it is getting a lot more. Um, and also, another thing that's been creeping up, we've got a Facebook community group, right, for the podcast. We're getting people coming in and um, putting, like, sharing something that's live. And the other one last week was uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson as live giving away money, right? And it's fucking bullshit scamming stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of scams going about, man. Um, it pisses me off. I, I don't know if you've seen, obviously, we've done like a £300 giveaway. And um, someone tried spamming that, where obviously the winner got announced um, and they made a fake profile, copied his profile and tried getting me to send it out. I was whoa, like, what? Whoa. And it was lucky I clocked onto it because they wanted all payment through PayPal and... Yeah, seriously, it was real bad. And um, one, once, obviously, the competition was done, I kept an eye on it, and they changed their username to another person. And, mate, there's a lot out there. And yeah, it got if if, so if anyone's buying online, always check, like, HTTPS. Um, I know, obviously. I always uh, make but, sure, like, do you know on the URL bar, uh, the web bar, there's got, you've got that lock. Yeah, yeah. If it's, if it's not got that yeah. lock. So that's HTTPS, look. Um, that yeah. makes it secure. Wait, wait, wait! You need to teach me, man. Yeah. What, what's this then? How, how, how do you? Right, so do you know what? So, so, so you buying something on, online, yeah. on that on the web address where it says the web address. Yeah. There should be like a little padlock just before it. Okay. So if it's got that, mate, it's safe. Okay. If it hasn't, don't buy that product. Okay. There you go. You've yeah. learned something new, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Learn every day, man. Every day we're learning, man. Every no, day. Also, you need to check your spam. I want. I want to see your spam box in. What mine? Yeah, I want. I want to see your what's in your spam box right now. <laughs> Please say you've got some Chinese woman saying, "Come at me, oh baby." My God. You all right? Bro? Oh, right then. See, look at all that there. Told you. He's going to swipe right on some of those. I told you, nah, man. I'm, I delete everything, man. <laughs> oh, you've got to be so careful, man. That's mad. Oh, careful, yeah. It pisses me off, these scams. Like, yeah, yeah. How people are so fucking heartless. <laughs> um, I will, you, know, you know what? I got one from my email the other mm. day, mate. And it was this um, from America, right? And it made it look so real that it was saying, like, ah, uh, this is, obviously, my fortune's worth this. And I said, like, I wanted to pick a random winner to give them X amount of money, click the link below, and so you can see what I'm giving you. Mm. Before I click the link, I said to my missus, have a look at this weird email. Mm -hmm. And she had a look, and she normally clicks on the email that's, that sent it to you, so that way you get to see if it's a dodgy email. Or, yeah, yeah. And she clicked on it, and she was like, that actually looks real. They're now making all these things look so realistic that trying to suck people into it. I said, I'm not clicking on that. Who on earth is going to give me a million dollars? Yeah, that's it, mate. It's fucking no one. Well, it ain't HM revenue, is it? <laughs> <laughs> mate, imagine. <laughs> I think it's excellent. They're trying to scam my account, mate. They're going to be, be very disappointed. <laughs> oh, my God. I, th I, I think the funniest one I've had, um, you know, DPD, DPD is quite big. Yeah. I, I had one where, obviously, sorry, we missed you, but you'll have to pay for a charge for us to re-deliver. And I'm looking at it, like you said, and that. Um, it came through for an email, but... The Divi, but I mean, had a profile picture of himself still as a fucking profile. Oh, so it's saying from, from DPD, and it looked like fucking Joe Bloggs. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amateur. 
See, if you're going, if you're going, do it at least. You know, put a bit of effort into it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just don't do it, mate. Yeah, Just that's don't it. Do yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you've checked your spam now, because now you know that I'm not bullshitting. Yeah, that's mad. That's weird, man. Yeah, but anyway, let's get back on track. Got you know, <laughs> a bit off track there, don't we? <laughs> but anyway, the let's let's speak about the beard company, bro. I want no. I've got got some beard balm here, mm. I, and it's, like I said last time, it is like sex in my beard for sure. <laughs> I don't know what sex you have, bro. <laughs> Pretty good, but this, this stuff here. <laughs> Everything in this is organic, any? It? Yes, it's there's, natural and it's organic. Um, there's, there's no chemicals in there or anything. No, uh, what we use obviously uh, with the fragrances, you ever get like your fragrance oils or your essential oils? Your essential oils are basically your na more natural based fragrance as such um which obviously i use yeah um so then i can actually cl claim that is effectively 100 percent natural um obviously if it's claiming it's 98 percent, for example then it's normally a fragrance okay um or products anyway uh, there's products i want to get right out on the market now but i can't um or i won't even uh, because i don't want to put products out on there without the safety report so i know there is brands that do do it but mate, it's not worth it. Like, why would I want to hurt someone when I'm trying to provide confidence to them? Like, no, yeah. Ma imagine sending some product out to some guy, he puts it on his beard, and then all his beard just sets on fire. <laughs> that <laughs> that's, that's petrol, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. Some companies might put petrol in their product. You never know. So, yeah. no, isopropyl alcohol, etc. Uh, there is uh, some sort of. Um, in the bigger companies, if you're a small batch company like myself, who I'm making, no problems. But uh, you do get a lot of chemicals normally to preserve the life um, oh, right, okay. of the product. So that's normally your supermarket brands. Obviously, not calling them out, but you would have seen them about. Um, but yeah, like obviously, we're still trying to get products out there. Um, and with COVID, I tell you what, like everything's just delayed. Like, no, um, I, could, uh, I could imagine. So. Yeah, it's, it's slowing me down, but I'm not going to rush it because of the safety. Um, is something that I'm quite big on. Um, but yeah, mate, everything's safety assessed. I'm glad you're enjoying the product and it is natural. Oh, I love it, mate. Love it. Absolutely love it. Did you have a big bib before you started it? Well, um, obviously I left the military. Um, so Ooh. then I've after that, I thought, fuck this. I'm not shaving. I am, I, am <laughs> I am not shaving every day. So I got I got a bit lazy, but I I, I did love it, and um, you know I think women dig beards, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think it secretly they do, mate. Yeah, secretly they do, definitely. Grow mine. Yeah, keep it growing. I keep telling you, mate. You need to keep it keep that growth going, mate. Yeah, I'll be here for God knows how long, mate. <laughs> so do you have a do you have like a secret lab? A secret lab. It's Dexter's laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Go, um, go, go cook some oil. No. So obviously, I actually use uh, a, a small room in uh, my dad's warehouse. Uh, my dad's got an established business. Like I said, I do a bit yeah, of part time yeah. work for him. Um, but a part of the agreement was obviously I do part time work for him for me to use a part of his warehouse. Um, and obviously, I wanted everything away from home. So then it's just me in there at the moment, uh, especially with COVID. For obviously obvious reasons yeah so i said solid like i can't work for you and I, if i can have a bit of space um so i work i do all the office work mainly from home if i'm honest uh because like i said i do look after the dogs and stuff being puppies and that but then i'll go into the warehouse and i'll make up the batches and then dispatch it etc um that way it's also away from home so it's like less likely for anything to come into contamination with it all um yeah so my room at the warehouse is obviously locked and it's literally just me that can enter. Um, I did plan on or wanted to do a shop and stuff but or a click and collect but because of the sake of COVID, it's just not worth it. I, I've gone down to basically just send it out via Royal Mail. Um, and barbers obviously is a bloody shame because I'm not as good as my barber. And now my hair is growing out. I got bits everywhere. Like, yeah. Um, I, 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 did, I don't touch my beard anymore with with streamers oh no 
No. Bad yeah. experience? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Very bad. Uh, to the point where I had to just go off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so no. <laughs> so your inspiration for the, for the product was that you've not shaved for so long and you just didn't want to cut your beard then? No. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky sod. No. Um, I, I started using other products, actually. Um, and going back to the CPSR, yeah. I, I, I did use a, a particular brand and I didn't get... I, I got sensitive skin, basically, so I had a bit of a reaction to it. So I asked him for the CPSR, um, which is obviously a safety report. And he said, oh, no, um, I'm still working on it, mate. Just waiting for him to come through. And I'm like, how the fuck did you put it on the market? Like, without, wow. uh, without a safety assessment? Um, and then I thought, well, if he's doing it, there's got to be a way that I can do it and get the safety assessments out and provide proper fucking safety assessed products for people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just looked into it a lot more. I, done, I did a lot of um, sort of experiencing with like the essential oils. I bought like um, a scented range and just researched everything. Um, and yeah, before I knew it, I started making my own products, trying them out, test them for a little while, then followed through safety assessments. And then boom, here I am. So still early days of it, late, but um, yeah, I think we're making good progress, may I say. So another, another thing that you do is you also support Mind. Yes, 5% goes to Mind. Um, so at, yeah, so you, 5% of your profits go to Mind each month, and that's mint, that is, man. Yeah, uh, we've been doing that. Obviously, it started up with an account manager from the Bristol branch, because um, obviously when you start dedicating yourself to them, I said, look, I, I want to support you. Uh, you you support me, uh, and you support a few friends. I said, and you're, you're a great uh, charity that I'd like to uh, be supporting, basically. And I said, look, how can I get involved? And they said, look, you can do it like this or this. And they sent me over some stuff. And, mate, they're so easy like to get along with. Um, and, yeah, i just basically gone from there. And, obviously, Bert, who uh, one of the, our lads, man made Bertie, um, dyed his beard red. Uh, <laughs> it was a bright red. Oh, and he's, he, he's been a bit quiet on social lately because he had to shave it off. Because oh, he done it. <laughs> no. it went bad, man. But it was funny because he tried doing it again. Apparently, it went like Hulk Green. <laughs> oh, shit. Was it permanent as well? It was. So he's done it oh. off. But he, he's got it coming back and you'll start seeing him more on social. He's a cracking lad as well. He's got a good personality. So, um, yeah, oh, nice. we'll have to get him involved one day. Absolutely, I bet that's so gutting, mate. <laughs> yeah, but mate, it was, it was surreal. Like, obviously, I want to do fundraisers and stuff as well. As like, obviously, just selling products. I want to do things that engage people that have a bit of a laugh with. And when he said all about doing it, I said, I, I bet you wouldn't do it. Like, and he did it. Um, we done over like 300 quid. I know for like a brand that's only been going six months to do 300 quid. Yeah, that's good. Once that's it. very good. You know what I mean? Um, and that was our Christmas raffle. Um, and yeah, um, it's going quite well. You see, January's been quiet and February's been quiet, but by all means, Father's Day's coming up and we're getting things ready. But yeah, we're doing our part, I suppose. So I bet when COVID's finished with yeah, and with all these restrictions have gone, you'll have a bit more freedom then, won't you? Well, yeah, but obviously I want to get out to the barbers. I started supplying a few barbers in Bristol. Um but like you mean, they don't know what's going on as much as we do, really. Um, yeah. You I mean they're, they're doing everything they can. I've seen some people that have spent some serious money, man, like trying to like keep it safe, mm. and then they still get shut down. And I mean, like everything's like it's probably the cleanest place you'll ever go. Sometimes, and you're just like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, and like I think COVID's just shit on everyone's plans. Uh, people wanted to go on holiday. People wanted to see their family. Christmas was probably the worst Christmas I've ever had, man. Like you've made it as good as you could, but you haven't seen your family, you haven't seen your friends. Like uh, you can't hug people or kiss people through the phone, can you? Like, no, no. And that 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 got to a lot of people. Um, I had quite a few messages over the Christmas period. Um, yeah, um, mate, it's just They're, lending here. Yeah, the Christmas period for Man United was pretty busy as well. Like, yeah, there's so so many men just struggling, like worse than the previous year you say we've got like say over 14,000 members that open up and 
It was so busy, and the admin team were just it was chaotic, mate. Yeah, chaos. It's, it's don't get me wrong, it's a good thing, it's a good yeah. thing that you know people are well, people are opening up, but it's for that for myself and the admin team, it was wow, just like mental. But like we say, all for a good cause, you know, we're pre- pre- preventing suicides from happening. And that's the main reason why we're doing this podcast. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, me and Monty met, what, uh, last July or something, was it? Last yeah, June? It was, it's coming up. It's not even been a year. No, it's not been a year yet. Uh, it was just amazing how you just could meet someone, connect, have the same sort of mindset, same experiences. Well, not same, but similar. Yeah, all related. And all related and you just engage together. And then try and also bring a community together to an extent and just share the light of how the true and sad part of the things that you go through when you're made to feel that you're alone and it's about just appreciating, being kind and understand people. And for those who do go through whatever the experience is about accepting, embracing mm. and just be on the present, just focus on the now. Exactly, yeah. So for the listeners and viewers, where can they find out about your BA company and what you do? So obviously our Instagram handle is Manmade Beard Co. Um, yeah. And obviously it's the same for Facebook. Uh, we are on YouTube, obviously. Like I said, it is just me uh, behind the scenes, if I'm honest. So I'm doing the products and answering the messages. Um, and also our main website, uh, which is www.manmadebeardcompany.com. Um, it's quite simple really it's the, it's the brand name um it's not .co.uk because that was taken um because i made an error when setting up the website uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's why it's .com so, um, there, so there isn't another man made then no i um i fucked up i, I i'm king of fuck ups <laughs> um, well at least, at least no one can have that now that's fine no, exactly but no i um i think i do embrace my fuck ups which actually made me learn you know what I mean? i'm saying homie i'm saying embrace them <laughs> Um, when you go to school you used to get told off for doing something wrong and I think like that's the sort of mentality I never got on well in school 100% like I got kicked out of school I wasn't a good kid like I wanted to help people I didn't get on with school lessons like I wasn't educational like smart I'm I'm a physical man that needs to be doing something physical like you mean Um, and yeah so far away (laughs) Yeah, man. So if anyone wants to get in touch with you and, you know, if they want to chat with you, you, you're on Instagram, we'll drop all the links in the description below. Yeah. I want to thank you for giving us some of your time today and coming on, man. No, anytime, mate. It's it's nice to support people that are doing a good thing, you know what I mean? Um, And actually support others that are actually supporting the same cause, may I say. Yeah, it's all, we're all related, mate. All related into the mental health community. It's happening. It's happening, Monty. Nah, man, it's been amazing, Connor, man. And weirdly, uh, Bristol Rovers fan, club that I hold here, homie. And I appreciate you for being in here and sharing your story. It's inspiration, obviously, you talking back to, to, what, 2019? To now 2021. Yeah, man. Time flies. Yeah. <laughs> time, time, time wise, you've we went from being down here to now you're just rising and, and embracing all your fuck ups and learning from them. And I think the listeners, viewers can take a lot from it, especially yeah. in the time period. Like I said, I think you, you learn, don't you, from doing. Um, and like I've, I've always been learned when I got told off, <laughs> like don't do that. All right, I won't do that, <laughs> and that's sort of how it is. Um, and when you when you mess something up, fuck something up, like I don't know, like anything, you've got to find a solution to fix that problem. And that's yeah. just I, I'm not a textbook guy. I've I've got to learn through the hard. Um, I think there's always um, 
success through the struggle, I say. Because when you've been like for pain or anything, you can see it like you sometimes think clearer because you think different um, instead of having your normal head on. So even though it's pain, it's sometimes good pain because you're learning something from it. We learn every day. We've learned a lot in this episode, Monty. I have. I loved it. It's been yeah. amazing, man. You've, le- <laughs> you've learned quite a lot in this episode, haven't you? Yeah, man. And I, even even from what you said as well, I feel like I could relate. I think we could relate to a lot. Yeah. I, use my, I use my pain to grow. Like, I yeah. use my, my experiences to just allow me to see clearer. Allow me to sort of like understand where I wanted to be, what I want to do. Mm. And it's an important and a powerful message for those who get to the end of this video, this chat. To understand that whatever you're going through, it's not there to destroy you, it's there to help you grow. Exactly. Grow, grow, grow. We're what growing. Are... We're growing that beard. We're growing that beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all about the growth. It's all about the growth. So I want to thank everyone that's watched and listened. We will be back next week with another episode. Connie, thanks for coming on, bro. It's been My awesome. Pleasure, man. Thank you so much, Mara. Peace. Peace, peace, peace.